They call it a sea of olives because the olive groves stretch as far as the eyes can see, no matter what direction you look, west, south, in every direction. Meanwhile, the actual Mediterranean Sea is about 56 miles away. Olive growing started in the eastern part of the Mediterranean and was introduced by the Phoenicians, followed by the Greeks and then the Romans, who extended it to the rest of the peninsula. We are perpetuating a legacy that began long before the Romans and continues in much of the same way today. Over thousands of years, humans have also influenced this evolution by making a selection of what exists in the natural world. People chose the strongest surviving olives and provided the biggest harvests during the winter months. Quite nearby, there are olive trees that have been producing the highest quality olives for over 400 years. But who knows who originally planted them? It's not that the olive tree is an intelligent species, but rather that it is perfectly adapted to the Mediterranean climate. If it rains a certain amount during the winter, the water is stored in the soil, and the olive trees have adapted to managing its use during the summer. It knows when the summer comes. It will have to get used to using less water. It knows that it needs to grow less. It knows that it has to rest and wait until it rains again in the autumn. Throughout the summer, it explores the terrain, seeking out the few available water resources, exploiting them, and ensuring that all the terrain characteristics are transmitted through the quality of the oil it contains. It is similar to what happens with vines. The very oldest vines explore the land around them much more and transmit much better properties to the grape in terms of tannins and other series of compounds. And the same thing can be said about olive trees. When we decide the optimum time for harvest, we tend to choose the holdings that have the best characteristics or the most advanced color. We collect the olives using canvas sheets or bales that are placed to prevent the olives from touching the ground and avoiding permeation with any undesirable flavors. When I started working 20 years ago, the oil we used to obtain back then was of far poorer quality than the oil we get now. All the farmers took their oil to the press where all the olives piled up in huge courtyards for several days to start fermenting. After that, the extraction process was far more effective because you got a much bigger yield in terms of oil, but it was very strong. It barely had any of the organoleptic qualities we appreciate these days. Bringing the harvest forward and concentrating the whole collection period around the start of the industry campaign and pressing huge volumes every day means that almost as soon as the olives are delivered, they are pressed. So in less than 10 hours, maybe even six, the harvested olives are transformed into oil. This means there is no chance for the olive to start fermenting or any other unusual processes. The quality of the oil produced today is infinitely better than 20 years ago because what we are really producing today is olive juice.
Take a look at these. Yes, they're good. An exceptional harvest. No complaints at all. Okay, let's get them pressed as soon as possible. Okay, let's go.